cattlemen of the West knew well that old saying, two wrongs won't make a right. But strangely enough, two rights can make a wrong, particularly if those rights happen to belong to tough men. In the early days, the West offered riches and opportunities to ranchers and miners alike. No one expected trouble, and then the ranchers around Nugget City started finding sick cattle near the rivers and water holes. The blame was soon laid at the door of the miners. Their deep mines had opened up underground springs of polluted water. And so, violence grew out of the rights of the two factions. A long, bloody war commenced between the cattlemen and the miners. know you're out playing with that rifle? Not a toy. Raise your hands. Now, just a minute. I said raise your hands. My next shot won't be just a warning. May I ask what this is all about? You'll find out in time, Steve Downey. Oh, so you know who I am. Then uh, how about putting down that rifle and introducing yourself? I'm giving you just three seconds to raise your hand. One, two. Maybe you better pump another shell on that rifle before you try using it, huh? Here, allow me. That's all right, I'll give it back. There you are, she's all ready to fire. You know, that's one reason I don't like rifles. You lose too much time in reloading. Man get himself killed before he could pump another shell in there. Now, will you tell me who you are? Hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh boy, Lou, I think you owe me some sort of an explanation. All right, Mr. Downey. You've made a fool out of me, but I can still give you a word of advice. Clear out of here and don't come back. I'm asking you two questions. Who are you? What were you trying to do down there at my brother-in-law's mine? My name is Molly Tavish, and I was figuring on taking you prisoner. Prisoner? <laughs> All right, go ahead and laugh. If it had been my brothers instead of me, you'd probably been shot. Look, Molly, I'm new in this territory, so keep talking. You're planning to reopen the John Carr mine, aren't you? Yeah, but what's that got to do with it? John Carr would still be alive today if he had listened to reason. The same thing goes for you. <laughs> the cattle, there's more trouble on the range. Listen, mister, go back where you came from. That's all I've got to say. Here. 
Much obliged for lending a hand, Durango. Any notion who those raiders were? A mess of dirty gold miners. Gold miners? What would they want with your cattle? They don't want our cattle. They're just out to ruin us. Why? Well, for one thing, because they Molly. think... Molly. Well, thanks again for lending a hand, Durango. Come on, let's round up the start. You better get on home, sis. you gonna take my gun? If I'd have had any gumption, I'd have shot you back there at the mine. Well, I'm sure much obliged you didn't. Now, look, will you please tell me what this is all about? There's been talk going around Nugget City that Steve Downey was coming to take over John Carr's mine. Well, anything wrong with that? John Carr's widow happens to be my sister. That mine has got to stay closed. Well, I think I ought to be the one who should decide that. You won't have anything to say about it. My brothers and I have been waiting for you ever since we heard you were coming. To shoot me on sight, huh? To warn you to clear out for your own good. Now, look, miss, I'm not in the habit of taking advice like that from anyone. Neither was John Carr. Maybe now you'll find out I wasn't fooling. Here come my brothers. Steve Downing. Yeah. Your sister says you've been waiting to tell me to clear out of here. Why? Because we've had all the trouble from you dirty gold miners we intend to. What kind of trouble? Look, mister, we're not here to answer your questions. We're just telling you to go back to where you came from. Better get going, Mr. Downing. Well, all I can say is I hope everybody I meet around here doesn't turn out to be as honor as you three. Why don't you talk it over with the marshal in Nugget City? Maybe he'll tell you all you want to know. Thanks. Well, I pinned a great big star on me and said from now on you shall be the law and order in this year town. Ever loving, Marshal. I told him then twas a big mistake, a job no fool would undertake. I sure wish now I'd turned it down. I Ever loving, Marshal. Some feller, he comes a tearing in, says, Marshal, come on quick. A feller's got his wife tied up and he's a beating her with a stick. What'd you do? I deputized him then and there, and says, go help her pull his hair. The hardest working man in town. <laughs> the ever loving marshal. The robbers do their work at night, and I just feel it isn't right. But you know who don't lose no sleep? The ever loving marshal. Now when they rob the bank by day, I seldom let them get away. He has to earn his board and keep the ever loving marshal. And when they get a little tough and try to steal a horse, I write them rustlers. Now you cut it out. Remember, I'm the boss. Though I don't approve of the way they do, they have to make a living too. Sometimes I think I work too cheap. The ever loving Marshall. The ever loving Marshall. <laughs> Excuse me, mister. Where can I find the Marshall? Well, the last time I seen him. Well, hey, 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 I'm the marshal. You sure? Yeah, yeah, sure I am. Hey, you know, nobody's wanted to see me about nothing in a long time. Come in my office. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all the gold miners swore they was gonna run out of all the cattlemen. And the cattlemen swore they was gonna run out of all the gold miners. All on account of poison waters. All the trouble just upset me so I just can't hardly even eat between meals anymore. I'm fl wasting plum away. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Hey, you know I'm gonna catch me outlaw like that someday. Marshal, have you any idea how my brother-in-law John Carr died? Yes, sir, a running, shooting gunfight, just like all the rest of them. 
There's a lot of people around here that thinks Tommy Tavish is the one that actually did him in. I reckon that Tavish bunch is pretty tough, huh? Tough? That ain't the word for it. They're just plumb dangerous. And you being a gold miner, you'd better stay out of the way. Oh, doggone, now look what I've done. Well, thanks, Marshal, for the information. I'll be good. Hello, Smiley. Well, howdy, Mr. Ashton. What can I do for you? Smiley Burnett at your service, willing and able, providing it ain't work and it ain't dangerous. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Ashton, meet Steve Downey. He's come to town to take over the John Carr mine. You must be Sam Ashton, the fellow I rode to. Of course, I remember. Welcome to Nugget City, Steve. Thanks. Say, I bet Mr. Ashton could answer a lot of your questions. He grubs take John Carr and most of the others. Well, that's so. From what the marshal tells me, you must have suffered quite a loss. Yes, we've been faced with a pretty bad situation. When you're not busy, why don't you drop over to my office and I'll tell you about it. Say, I'd like to, right now. Fine. You know, until I got your letter, I didn't know that John Kai had a wife. Well, that she was your sister. Just how many people besides yourself knew I was coming to Nugget City? It's pretty hard to say. I may have discussed the matter with the Mullen, the government assay of wine. Oh, nothing much. I just got the sort of reception I wasn't expecting, that's all. The Tavishes. Yeah. Yeah, they're a hot-headed family. And they're dead set against the mine's reopening. Not all the cattlemen. Yes, but the Tavishes are the worst troublemakers. Sagasti? Oh, thanks. Say, this looks pretty rich. Well, that's from my mine, the Cameo. Good assay? <laughs> Better than $300 a ton. And I'm still able to operate it because it's the only mine on the territory that doesn't drain seepage into the river. Just how valuable is the John Carr mine, Mr. Ashton? Mm, we hadn't gone deep enough to find out for sure. A new vein was about to be assayed when all the trouble stopped everything. I'd like you to meet our government assayer. Go ahead. Major. <coughs> this is Steve Downey. Steve, Major Mullen. It's a pleasure, sir. Likewise, Major. Have you any report on the car mine yet, Major? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Carr was killed, as I remember, before we ever ran an assay. Right after that, you shut down all the mines except the cameo, Mr. Ashton. Well, I did that in the hope of avoiding further bloodshed. It seems to me there's quite a little shooting still going on. Well, the role of a peacemaker is always a thankless one, Mr. Downey. You know, the Major's right. By appeasing the cattlemen, I gave the miners cause to make trouble. <laughs> Take time to cool off, young fella. Thanks for interfering. It was a trouble, Bede. The Tavishes got it through their hot heads that I'm responsible for running off their cattle. Huh. That sidewinder jumped me when I wasn't looking. Well, you better stay clear of them. You know what happened to John Carr. Well, meet Steve Downey. Carr's widow is his sister. Howdy. How are you? You gonna reopen the car mine? That depends on quite a few things. Well, the biggest thing is getting rid of the Tavishes. Glad you're here. We miners need all the help we can get. Well, don't count on me too much. I haven't even inspected the miners yet. If I can give you a hand, just say the word. Thanks. I'll call on you if I need it. Don't get blamed for it.
that's how he went. Wait a minute. I've got an idea how we can take care of Steve Donnie and settle a score I got with Tom Tavish. Let's go. More coffee, Tommy? No, thanks, sis. I still think we're wrong about Steve Downey. Wrong nothing. We never were more dead right. Why, he's already in thick with Bede. That means Bede will make him think that Tommy shot John Carr. You both know I wasn't anywhere near the mine when Carr got killed. But that won't stop Downey from thinking I did it. What was that? Cowboys free Saturday night in San Antonio. All day long they work for pay just to throw it all away. Saturday night in San Antonio. All around the old Ace High Saloon, Puncher finds his thrill, but he walks to church on Sunday noon, chewing a box of headache pills. If I live to 91, I'll remember all the fun Saturday night in San Antonio. shouldn't go gallivanting around out here in the hot sun without no hat on. You'll go as loco as a pooty bug. <laughs> I don't know what a pooty bug is, Smiley, but I'll see what I can do about getting a new hat. Well, pooty bugs is the locoest critters in the world. Hello, Miss Dyson. Morning, Smiley. Hello, Steve. Oh, I was just on my way over to your office with an ore specimen. Good. I'll go with you. See if the major's in yet. Mullen, you stupid sot. Greetings, my friend and brother crook. Shut up. Pull yourself together. Downey is here with an ore sample from the car mine, and you've got to assay it. Poor John Carr. Poor John Carr. Stop that and get ready to run the test. Sorry to keep you waiting, Steve. Major's been drinking. It's a weakness of his. But he'll be straightened out in time to run a test for you this morning. I'll give him the ore if you like. Oh, thanks. See, by the way, where can I buy a new hat in town? Ran into a little trouble yesterday and lost mine. Try a clock store down the street. Much obliged. <laughs> measure, I'm giving you what you gave Tom.
That's what I'd sure like to know. This hombre drew a gun on me and tried to shoot me down. And I'll do it again, any chance I get. He murdered my brother, sneaked up on the house last night and shot him. Is this true? Of course not. I never went near the Tavish Ranch last night. Then how come you lost your hat there right after you killed Tom? I lost my hat yesterday, but I never lost it on your ranch. Somebody else killed your brother. Now he's trying to put the blame on me. Well, Steve, I'll just have to take your gun and lock you up. Now, don't worry. You've got a good case here to what happened to John Carr. The jury will figure you had plenty of reason to kill Tom. But I tell you, I didn't kill him. Maybe you did and maybe you didn't. Either way, the word of Scotty Tavish isn't going to carry any Why? far. You'll be out in no time. I'll see what I can do. Uh, come on. Please. I'm not waiting for the law to settle this. says that a person accused of murder shall cool his heels in the jug till the court finds out whether he is innocent or guilty. Look at there. <laughs> I can catch me. Hello, Mr. Ashton. Thought you'd like to know, Steve. I've been over to the county seat. Made arrangements to retain one of the best defense lawyers in the territory for your case. Now, but I got some bad news for you. A circuit judge isn't due here for 60 days. I'm afraid you're in for a long wait until your trial comes up. Well, in the meantime, who's going after the man who really killed Tom Tavish? That's the way to talk. It'll make a good defense. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I have some more bad news for you. That ore specimen you brought me from the car mine. Yes? It doesn't assay worth a plug nickel. Well, maybe Major Mullen didn't do a good job. Oh, I didn't count on him. He was drunk. I ran the test myself, and you can take my word for it. The car mine is not worth reopening. Anyway, the important thing now is to get you clear of this Tavish trouble. You can count on me for help, you know that. Thanks. I'll keep in touch with you, Steve. Smiley, get me out of here. Yeah, sure. Look, you're a murderer. It says in the book you gotta stay in there. Well, I gotta get out of here, I tell you. Ashton doesn't know it yet, but that ore sample he tested I said $300 a ton. I don't know nothing about that. I know you gotta stay in there. Uh, come here a minute, will you? What for? I wanna show you a trick. A trick with that rope. You know something about rope? Sure, come in. I'll show you how to do it in two minutes. Hey, look. What's your hand do down here? Hold the loop open. Now bend your wrist a little bit. Like that? That's it. Just like that. Now what I do? Now you open this door. <laughs> hey, where'd you get that gun? That's my gun. That ain't legal. Hurry right? up, open it. And I said hurry. Yes, yes, sir. I, I thought you was just fooling there. Yes, sir. Get in there, quick. Why, well, when people find out I've let you escape, you know what they're gonna, they're gonna hang me. That's your problem, Marshal. Oh, no, come back here now. Look, you got me into this. Now you better get, help, look what he's doing. This is my jail. He's not supposed to lock me in it. This is for other people. <laughs> Thank 
explain this. Here, shoot yourself, will you please? Did you see who did it? I didn't see nothing. I just heard bang, bang, and there you was dying in your bed. Or you would have been if you'd have been in it. Folks in this town's gonna think you're dead, and what am I gonna do for a corpse? Why don't you use some heavy books and bags of sand? Why? Sure, you got yourself into this mess in the first place by letting me escape. Now all you've got to do is get a coffin over here and see that I get a decent burial. Yeah, and then you'd show up and spoil it. Listen, don't you tell anyone I'm alive. And I won't tell anyone I'm not dead, see? Is that a promise? It's a deal. Boy, you sure got me out of a bad fix there. Think nothing of it. You know, Smiley, a lot of people seem to want me out of the way. And I want them to think I am for a while. Hey, Marshal. Huh? Me and these men will be willing to ride posse for you. When are we going? Going where? Why, after Scotty Tavish for killing Steve Downey. Oh, now, don't go jumping at no confusion. I got to bury Steve first. 
bury the dead. That's what it says in the good book. Besides, what makes you think Scotty shot Steve in the cushion? I, I mean, killed him. Well, we all heard Scotty say he wasn't going to wait for the law to settle the score. So it's up to you to arrest him for murder. Well, I ain't going to. Leastways, not until I've done right by Steve's corpse. Corpus delecti. That's Latin for go get the coffin. Marshal or no marshal? Are we going to let Scotty Tavis get away with shooting Steve Downey in cold blood? No. no. All right, let's get him. might have had more than me. It's not too hard to see that you won't be a-taking it with you when you go. Though not wealthy, like as not, you had plenty in your sock, but you won't be taking it with you when you go. Oh, folks will talk about you now. You was the finest man in this town, but they never said a thing like that. When you was a hanging around, it won't matter what they've said. Your old hat's on another's head, for you won't be a taking it with you when you go. Some folks pretend to grieve, they just figured up what you leave, but you won't be a taking it with you when you go. 
Seems right strange the way they do. They'll be along right shortly too. And they won't be a taking it with them when they go. Makes no difference what you own, who you was or what you did. Ain't much chance of your coming back when I screw down this lid. All the nice things that you do makes the folks remember you. But you won't be a taking it with you when you go. Tavish. The Durango kid pulled him right off from under our thumbs. Don't look so scared. Last time I saw him, he was right in the opposite direction. to kill me and all the others. Let go! Hell! Shh! You want to wake all the dead? Who killed John Carr? They didn't tell me about the murders. I, I didn't ask. I, I didn't want to know. All I did was to mix the chemicals. You mean the poison? Yes, yes. They, they put it in the river water to kill the cattle. Mullen, open up! Open up! What is it, Pete? I'm sure I heard Mullen yelling for help. Uh, maybe he's seeing those snakes again. Mullen! Mullen, is anything the matter? Uh, a ghost. What uh, is it? What are you talking about? But he was here just now. He's drunk. Who was here? Steve Downey, his ghost. You're crazy. Downey's dead. I ought to know. Boys, you can place it on the wagon now. I'm fixing to escort the corpse to the county seat personally, so there'll be a fitting and legal burial. Oh, hello, Mr. Ashton, Mr. Bede. The remains is just leaving town. You got here in time to say farewell. Are you sure Steve Downey is in this box? Well, it ain't his grandma. Boys, put it on the wagon. Steve's changed. Steve. Never mind him. Steve Downey is alive, so we're going to work fast. Ring Eye, as of now, we're resigning the law business. Why was he here? What did he ask you? He wanted to know who killed him. What did you tell him? Don't be a fool. Nobody killed him. Stop. What did you tell him? Nothing. The, the, the poison water, I... Listen, I, Sam. I told the boys to go back to work. Why? I told you to have him lay off until Danny was out of the way. But I thought he was out of the way. Chase him down. I'll go to the mines and stop the men. 
Pack loads more. Well, then clean it out fast and don't leave any evidence behind. It wouldn't be healthy for us if Steve Downey found our secret entrance to his mind. Steve Downey? Well, B told us he was dead. Well, he isn't. Not yet. Come on, hurry it up. Catch up the tunnel while the rest of us take out with the wagon. Sure. Thank you. 
Then we get that order inside. Never love it, Marshal. Take in the great six star office. Never love it. There's some questions I want to ask you. Didn't work this time, Ring Eye. Get down. This side? Get down. Yes, sir. Right now. Steve Downey been up to? Well, no. I mean nothing. Look, he had me fooled, too. Don't lie. I ain't lying. Look, I don't know nothing about it. Nobody could be that stupid. Now talk and talk what? fast. What did Downey tell you? Reach and reach high. Nugget City is on top of me at one time or another. I never cross a peace officer. Besides, I need you to place Ashton here under legal arrest. What you want me to arrest him for? Poisoning cattle, grub staking miners, then having them killed if they found gold. Talking through his hat, Smiley, he can't prove it. I can prove every bit of it. All this law came from John Carr's mind. Hold it, Durango. to say much obliged to you. We heard you was in trouble. What happened to them? You're all under arrest, see? Take beat in too, Marshal, for the murder of Tom Travis. You help him hurt these sidewinders in the jail. Four oh, boys, get in. Go to the man. Over. Why don't you stick around and operate your mind? I like you, Scarley, but I have some business that needs my attention. Well, we hate to see you leave us, Steve. Hey, believe. Maybe I'll be back someday. Bye, Molly. Goodbye, Steve. Adios, folks. So, Bye. so long, Bye. Steve. Bye.
Come on, boy. Let's go, boy.